So there are certain parts of, I would say, not just the party state apparatus, but even say the tech industry that benefit from tape, data, massive data collection, and turn similar to the way we see big tech companies in the United States uh, or elsewhere who are collecting data, gives them information to their users, it allows them to personalize content. Some of the most popular uh, news aggregation apps in China uh, push news person in a way that uses algorithms and artificial intelligence to identify what's of interest to users and then pushes news that's ostensibly that you know that would be of interest to them and they're more likely to read. Um, and so so certainly you have a situation where some of the big tech companies benefit from it. And then of course uh, the Chinese police. I mean you have, you have to understand that in China the police and the security apparatus have much more direct and extensive access to electronic data and communications uh, than they would in a democracy. Uh, you don't have to ask for a warrant. <laughs> the public security can come in and look at the data centers. In some cases where there have been actual leaks of some of the surveillance um, measures that are and systems that are used in China, you see that content from cyber cafes is basically just being channeled directly to the local public security bureau. So the, the directness and the extent of the surveillance uh, is, is much greater in China than other parts of the world. So of course that gives a lot of information to the security apparatus. And one of the things that we found in our research and other human rights groups like Human Rights Watch have found, for example, is that the police, there are Chinese tech companies who are designing databases that um, have like handheld version devices that police can pull up people's in private information and enter various kinds of information. And it's not just uh, you know, what would be, let's say, publicly available information, but it's things like passport numbers, it's your hotel, it's for people who are users of drugs, they might have to do a urine test and there's the results of their urine samples. Um, there's information, um, uh, psychological, mental health information for people who have had mental health issues, for people from a banned religious group like Falun Gong. It's about when did you start practicing this particular practice? Who do you know? Um, and so it's really quite extensive in terms of both the information that can be manually entered, but also that then can be scanned automatically uh, to flag. It's a lot of facial scans. It's a lot of voice recognition. It's a DNA samples. It's really a massive amount of information that can be compiled into an electronic file about a particular individual.